There's so much to go through. So, I, I mean, maybe, maybe we should start about with um, the point at which you were told that you were going to be able to get the chip implanted, because we can talk about the accident that led you to that. But I think that might take up too much time. Maybe we get to the stage where you've met with Neuralink, you've gone through the process, and they're telling you that they can put, they can implant this chip in your brain. Um, yes. And and how you felt about that, because that's that's not a normal everyday. Oh, great! I'll just nip in for an operation to have a chip put in my brain. So, talk us through <laughs> the point at which Neuralink told you that you were going to have this happen. Yeah. So once I applied, um, it was about a month of interviews, and after that month, maybe another two months of waiting around. Um, it seemed like I had passed all of their um, requirements, everything that they, all the boxes that they needed to check. It seemed as if I was going to be one of the participants, but I was one of the first people to apply, I think. I was very early on. And so I think from uh, Neuralink's point of view, um, Barrow's point of view, Barrow's is the hospital uh, that is running this whole study. Um, from their point of view, they thought, oh, well, we found this uh, guy so quickly that I'm sure there's going to be dozens, hundreds of yeah. people that are going to match all the criteria. Um, that didn't end up happening. Um, they they quickly found that they, I think, lucked out with me. I don't know, I don't know what it was, <laughs> but um, stars just sort of aligned. And so around December, they told me that I was officially one of their participants. Um, I didn't find out I was going to be the first until early January. And when that happened, they said, okay, you're our first participant. We're doing surgery in about two weeks. Wow. Um, so it was a really quick turnaround. I How mean, did you feel even about with, that though? Yeah, it was, it was, um, it was exciting. I, I thought a lot about it uh, leading up to actually being told that I was going to be the first. I thought, you know, all of the pros and cons, obviously I have the worst version of this implant that is ever going to be uh, in a person. Um, I didn't know what the, what the outcome would be. Mm -hmm. um, this is a brand new, you know, device. It's novel surgery in general. Um, it's the first time they'd used this specific robot in the surgery. So there was a lot that I needed to think through, a lot that I needed to talk with my family about, um, prepare them for, you know, worst possible outcomes. And I don't know, I was just excited. I never felt afraid. I never felt as if I wouldn't do it given the chance. I always knew that if they chose me that I would kind of dive in um, mm. completely. Uh, there was nothing holding me back and I was I was completely at peace with the whole with the whole thing. So there you are going under the knife to have a chip the size of yeah. a, a coin surgically yeah. implanted into your mm -hmm. skull uh, i yes. read it has ultra thin threads that go into the brain which develop a brain computer interface so you wake yes. up after this surgery and someone switches a computer on mm. is it instantaneous do you instantly start to control the mouse do you instant how, how do you did you have to train it did you have to think about it yeah um i wasn't allowed to really do much with it at first. Um, the first 10 days were taken very slowly, very cautiously. Um, we weren't allowed to charge the implant at all for the first 10 days, so they were very limited on what we could do on a daily basis. Immediately after surgery in the hospital, they came in with a tablet and they connected the tablet to the implant and they showed me real-time neuron spikes um, going on in my brain. Uh, immediately I started you know, trying to wiggle my fingers, do whatever I could in order to see if I could, you know, line up the spikes with uh, what I was doing. And it worked immediately. Um, no way. I, there, were, there were maybe eight, eight channels that they had showed me on the screen. And one of them very specifically um, spiked when I moved my right index finger. And so I did it a few times and I was like, this is so cool. Yeah. I showed everyone, everyone was so excited. And then for the next 10 days, it was a lot of calibrating uh, the, the device. So it learned what I was trying to do and mapped that to what we wanted, which was cursor control. And I would say within a week and a half, I was controlling the computer. It was super easy. So you, I mean, cause, cause 
a device that is able to monitor neurons firing and connecting, mm. i.e. brain patterns, is probably not all that new. But then to yeah. translate that brain pattern, those brain waves that are being shown, into actually getting you to do what you want to do on a computer screen which isn't literally connected to your head, that's something altogether different. So that week and a half that you spent, were you trying to connect to the computer? Were you trying to think, move the cursor top left of the screen? What, what were you actually trying mm -hmm. to do? So there's a couple different ways that we calibrate it. Um, what I was doing a lot at the beginning was what we call body mapping, which is just a visual of a hand doing different actions on the screen. So a hand uh, opening and closing, a hand moving to the right, left, fingers uh, moving up and down. And I did that a lot at the beginning. And that's just to show the Neuralink, you know, when this uh, visual is on the screen, this is what he is trying to do. So map that accordingly. Um, and then from there, it was a lot like how you would calibrate a mouse on a computer regularly. You move it to the left, you move it to the right, move it up and down. You go to certain targets on the screen and the Neuralink learns that. It learns if I'm in the center of the screen and there's a target on the left side of the screen, um, I am trying to move towards it. And so whatever action I'm doing with my hand, it'll learn, okay, that means he's going this way. Uh, and over time, it learns it. And they were fixing things on the software side on their end. They were tuning things because they didn't know how this was going to work. Mm. And so over time, it just got better. I think when this is released to the public, it won't be a week and a half. It'll be a couple minutes that someone is able to use this at a much more proficient rate than I am right now. Tell me what that was like. Tell me what it's like to think I need the mouse to go here and to click on this link to open up the game or play the tune on Spotify or whatever. I mean, mm. how did you feel? Yeah, yeah, it was, it was incredible at first. At first, the one of the first times I ever gained cursor control, I was blown away. I thought this technology was, you know, just the most fascinating piece of hardware that they could have ever implanted in me. Yeah. Um, and from there, it, it just became second nature. I remember even a couple weeks in, I was just so casual with using it every day, but people would come by and see me interacting with the computer and their jaws would drop. And it, it reminded me constantly how incredible this technology is um it's obviously not something you see every day so it was a it was a lot of fun at the beginning it was a lot of fun actually it's been a lot of fun this entire time um i'm so cavalier about it now i i just feel <laughs> as if you know, it's it's just a part of my daily yeah. life i forget yeah. i forget that i'm physically controlling things with my brain it just doesn't register me I anymore mean, that you putting it like that is just yeah. I and mean, that is crazy that is yeah. absolutely crazy that you are physically controlling something with your mm -hmm. thoughts that you can see happening yeah. so and what has this given you you know you've had this horrendous accident which has mm -hmm. completely changed your life mm -hmm. presumably this technology enables you to 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 work in, in a way that mm. would never have been possible previously to access all kinds of opportunities that would never have been possible previously? That's exactly it. Um, it's given me a lot of hope. I think more than anything, it's given me a lot of hope for the future about what I'm capable of doing. Before Neuralink, I had tried doing a lot of things. I had tried getting work. I had tried going back to school. I mean, nothing seemed to fit. Yeah. Nothing seemed possible. And after Neuralink, it, it's opened up a whole world of opportunities. And so, I mean, that's just, that's the overall like grand scheme, um, what it has changed in my life. I think I am more active on a daily basis. I think, you know, being able to share my story and to advocate for Neuralink is something that I'm very passionate about. And so obviously that has opened up a lot of opportunities for me as well it really has just changed how I live my life. And more than anything, I, I'm really looking forward to just um, trying to give hope to other people in my situation because ultimately that, I think, is is one of the most important things yeah. that, um, that has come out of all of this. And what do you think, I mean, whether you do think about what the extent of this technology could actually be, 
you've talked about the time lapse between actually having it implanted and being able to control the cursor going mm -hmm. down from a week to hours maybe but i wonder in the brain computer interface whether there might be a set of circumstances in the not too distant future i, I read that you're learning japanese for example could yeah. there be a way in which the chip in your brain tells your brain the japanese that you wish to learn and you can learn it within 10 minutes 15 minutes an hour sort of matrix yeah. style <laughs> yeah i'm i'm not sure i think something along those lines is a definite possibility it may not be you know like the matrix where you just download all of the knowledge into your brain but it might be something more along the lines of um like translate where someone is speaking to you in japanese and it translates what um, they've said into whatever your natural language is um, into your mind. And then when you um, go to speak, if they have a Neuralink as well, it does the same thing for them. So I think those things are a definite possibility. Um, at this point, I don't know what the Neuralink is capable of. Mm. I'm blown away every day at what this implant can learn. Um, that was something that really surprised me early Give on. Give me an example. How so if you think about moving any part of your body, um, you don't actually have to physically think about, okay, like right hand, lift, right hand, um, go left, right. Your brain sends that signal almost before you intend to do it because it has to go all the way down, come all the way back up. The Neuralink is just as capable. The Neuralink is learning to anticipate what your actions are because your brain is sending those signals early. So things of that nature where it is intuiting what you want to do is something that I find just amazing. Um, it is, it is so much more capable than I think a lot of people um, give it credit for. And I can only imagine what, what it's going to be capable of in, you know, five years. This is the very first um, example of this Neuralink being in a person. And I'm able to do, you know, X, Y, and Z with it at this point. I can only imagine when they figure out certain things. I mean, we know we know so little about the brain mm. and already we're learning different things about the Neuralink and how it can interact with me and how it can interact with different devices. And so it really is just a whole new world that we're exploring here, a uh, new frontier. And I don't know, I'm, I'm just really excited to see. Obviously there are things like um, being able to cure certain uh, debilitating diseases yeah, yeah. Um, you know you implant a Neuralink in the brain and one below the level of a spinal cord injury and then the signals just kind of skip the spinal cord injury and you would be able to move again I keep telling people that I think in the future at some point you would be able to have a spinal cord injury go into the hospital get a Neuralink implanted and walk out maybe within hours maybe within days I'm not sure but I think that's a definite possibility that I'll see hopefully in my lifetime it's absolutely fantastic to talk to you thank you so much for coming on um absolutely you're 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 inspiring you're a very inspiring guy very thank much you. thank you it. so much thanks i appreciate it thanks for having me